Good morning. Welcome to Making Stuff with Chris Dayhut. We're going to be taking a look at RC servos. Uh, let me put them under this camera. might make a little better view for you. RC servos are wonderful little devices that allow you to get fairly precise control of motion uh, from a microcontroller or a single board computer, etc. They come in various sizes. This is a micro one. Uh, they call it a 9 gram usually. It's very, very small. Uh, they're great for animating very small things. Uh, this one's, uh, we'll call it about a, I think they used to in the old days call this the standard size uh, servo uh, for radio control airplanes. Uh, not so much in the helicopter or car uh, world, but in the airplanes this would have been commonly a standard size. They get much bigger than this and uh, as well as smaller. Uh, but these are in the pretty very commonly available ranges. And what they allow us to do is send them a PWM signal uh, that's precisely clocked by the Raspberry Pi Pico to control the position of uh, rotation for its output shaft. Uh, that gives you great control over whatever it is you're trying to move. Uh, we're going to bring our test rig in here on this camera so that you see. Let me get that turned about like so. That might make a little more sense. Um, the layout is quite simple. Got my Raspberry Pi Pico here. Wires. Don't need external power supply for these smaller servos. And then I've got that small servo here in a vise just to hold it upright so we can see it. Now with that, what we're going to do is use the uh, machine library, which gives us uh, control over PWM and uh, pulse width modulation, as well as its frequency and duty cycle. We've got another complete video explaining all those details available and I'll put a link down below so that you can reference that one if you're a little short-handed on understanding PWM signals. I've got a sample program here uh, that I use. It's actually my base program that I use anytime I'm working with uh, these servos on Raspberry Pi Pico because their, their manufacturers are of questionable quality with some of them that we get from the more economical or value-priced websites. Uh, so the precision timing and so forth and their claims are approximate, as I've learned over many, many years. So what I'll do, I create a, a, a base program like this one uh, for a 180-degree rotation servo, and uh, it's got some basic values in it that'll get me close to the true movement that the servo's rated for. However, uh, oftentimes we got to fiddle with the values to get exactly what we want. Uh, but this will be our test program. Uh, it'll work great for this uh, lesson, and it'll work great for your own base program. But before we dive into this, let's take a look at a data sheet for a servo. Uh, this is a generic one I found off the uh, internet. Um, it looks to me like this image here was actually doctored. Uh, th this could be accurate, I'm not sure. Uh, but nonetheless, this is a common size uh, servo. Mine happens to be called an uh, MG... Uh, what is it? M MG90S. So, similar wording here. There's is uh, 8G90, I think, from what I'm seeing down there. It, it's pretty much irrelevant. The important things that you want to understand is its rotation. This, rot this servo can rotate approximately 180 degrees. I love that they word that. Now, in some servos, such as uh, this uh, Futaba brand one, they actually have... Uh, stops. It will physically only rotate to its limits. And this one is apparently about 180 degrees. 
but it'll rotate that far, stop, and there's a mechanical stop not allowing it to go any further. These more economical servos don't have the stops, so it'll kind of loop around, and sometimes if you're telling it with the PDM, PWM signal to go too far, the thing kind of spins around in a circle and acts like a DC motor. So be careful with them. Uh, nonetheless, this is a 180-degree servo, and uh, the important things off of the uh, data sheet will be uh, the connections. Uh, brown is ground, or zero volts. VCC is uh, our uh, positive voltage. And uh, PWM signal, our logic signal, is coming through on the orange wire. These are what's coming out of almost all servos. They generally try to follow, all the manufacturers follow this pretty standardized uh, color coding. Uh, the power, seg power and signal should be in that 4.8 volt range, roughly 5 volts like we usually do. And that's perfectly good for these. Some servos are rated at a higher voltage, and you can power them that way, even in uh, an environment with a Pico, but you're going to wire it a little different. Um, the important thing is here to understand this, uh, and if you don't understand PD PWM signals, please review the other video and come back to this one so it makes a little bit more sense. But we need to be running at 50 hertz, which is, is in essence, 20 milliseconds of total uh, wave time. And then our working range is 1 to 2 milliseconds to control that full 180 degrees of motion. So here we'll say the, the horn will be at 0 degrees, about here would be 90 degrees, here would be 180 degrees. And that's what this description over here is explaining to you. So that's where we're going to be getting our base starting point from. Coming back to our, our base program, uh, what we just described off the data sheet is this information here. Um, but it's telling us data in milliseconds, and when we're specifying that duty cycle rating, we're specifying it in an integer broken out to 65,535 discrete uh, values. So we need a mapping sequence here. Uh, and I've kind of done that with this little abbreviation here. I'm saying 0 equals 0% zero and equals 0 milliseconds. Now, if we go full-on, full-duty cycle of 655.35, the maximum that I can put into um, uh, my... Uh, duty cycle using duty underscore U16. That would be the max value I can put in it. That would be a 100% duty cycle. And because we're running at 50 hertz, that would be about 20 milliseconds. Okay, remember 20 is what the data sheet told us we had to run at. And then 0 to 655.35 is the data setting range of our duty cycle, giving us uh, 65,535 uh, uh, discrete positions for the servo. It really won't resolve to that, uh, but it kind of helps you to understand what that range is. Um, I've come up with these estimated min, mid, and max duty cycles for 0, 90, and 180 degrees as a starting point for a 180 degree servo. So I'm saying if we start at 1,000 for our input into the duty uh, value, uh, uh, duty cycle value, um, that would be at 0 degrees. 180 degrees would be 8,500. Uh, of a value, and then halfway between those two should give us about 90 degrees. This has worked for almost every servo I've ever uh, worked with uh, using a microcontroller and a 16-bit uh, resolution for our variable value, meaning 65,535. So uh, coming down, we're uh, going to import uh, from machine, get a pin, and we're going to set it up as a PWM signal. 
we're going to import our MicroTime library. I don't, yeah, I'm going to use it here for sleeps in between the moves. We're going to create a servo object from uh, this class, PWM class, uh, and we're going to be using a GPIO pin number 15. That'll make sense in a moment when we look at the Fritzing diagram. Uh, we're going to set the frequency for that PWM signal to 50 hertz. Here I'm setting angle 0, angle 180, angle 90 to these preset estimated values. They're just starting points. And then when I command M my servo uh, object with a duty cycle value, in this case angle number 0, it'll go to uh, uh, the value of 1000 as defined in it. So the servo will rotate to that position. And then we'll sleep for two seconds. Then I'm going to change the angle to 90. And then sleep two seconds, change the angle to 180. Uh, and that's pretty much the whole program to get it to move to those three positions. One thing to remember, we're not telling the servo how far to move. We're telling it to move to a discrete position within the range of 0 to 180 degrees. Now, before we run this, let's first take a look at the wiring diagram. I've got it on a fritzing here, and uh, we're going to utilize the 5 volts uh, from VBUS and ground from the Raspberry Pi Pico. These little servos don't draw a lot of current, so we can actually wire right directly to it for our power source. Our PWM signal is coming off of here, which is GP15, and that would be going uh, into the orange wire, into the servo. Very simple to wire up. It's you got to work pretty hard to mess this one up. We'll come back to our program. Uh, let's take a look here at the wiring. I've uh, taken VBUS in the ground, brought it over to the power rails. That goes into the wires, black and red, which go into brown and red on the servo. And then my yellow wire goes to the orange wire for the GP15 to provide PWM to the servo. So let's see what my default values will get me for rotational positions. We'll go ahead, click Run with Thani. That would be 0 degrees, 90 and 180. Now, in truth, I think that's rotating more than 180 degrees. So I'm just going to put my finger here as a reference. Yes, we're going past my finger. I'm going to guess about 10, 20 degrees. That's truly irrelevant, but we know we're getting more rotation than we should. So let's go back to our program and uh, usually, if I mess with this starting or the base number, the uh, lowest value, for example, I'm going to set it to 500. And what we're going to probably find is it won't even run. Nothing. Then we go to the 90, then the 180. It can't even convert that into a motion. And I'm going to show you something on that data sheet that kind of is a clue. One to two milliseconds is your working range for that motion between zero and 180 degrees. So one millisecond would be zero degrees. Two milliseconds would be 180 degrees. If we go back to our program, we would look here if we're at a 1,000, we're probably less than a millisecond. Now, if you've got an oscilloscope, of course, you can wire that up, and you'll be able to see the timing of this much better. Most people don't have an oscilloscope, so we're doing the trial and error method. So we know uh, below a 1,000 probably isn't even going to resolve into a motion. That signal's too short for the servo to interpret. So we'll bump it back up. I'm going to go to a 1,000. Make sure that we're still running there. 
Okay, but my range is too far. So we're at 8,500. So I'm going to drop that down to 8,000 and see if it looks more like 180 degrees of rotation. So we're there. Very close right now. I'm going to go down a little bit more. We'll say 75. That's looking pretty good. Now we could uh, mess around to try to find that zero point so that the horn, this is called the horn, is perfectly vertical. Often, if you're trying to lower the value like we just did, you can't adjust that position further in that direction. So it's a mechanical adjustment. We'll take the horn off. In this case, this is not a splined horn. It's just a held in place with the screw. So I'm going to put it straight up and down like that. Now let's see what it looks like when we run. That looks like 180, that looks like 90, and that looks like zero, or vice versa. I should have said that's zero, 90, and 180 as we watch it run on the program. That's the down and dirty way of working with these servos. And of course, you can program that duty cycle to any value you want to get any position between 0 and 180. But this little base program or template program allows you to get up and running very quickly and to get your endpoints set closely. Now, as I mentioned before, the uh, servos, some of them have a hard stop, so it physically can't go below zero or above 180, but these more economical ones don't have the dead stops. So you might need to, if your servo spins around in circles and won't stop, you might need to increase your lowest value, in my case here in the example, angle zero, increase that to say 1500, or and or try dropping the angle 180 below 7500 and see if that resolves your problem. But overall I found these ranges to be quite reliable on almost every servo I've ever played with. So that should get you started a little bit with RC servos on the Raspberry Pi Pico. In future videos we're going to be looping back around uh, in both projects and with using other accessories with the Pico to control servos. So with that, I'm going to wrap up this video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, I would hope that you would uh, give me a like and perhaps even subscribe. It also helps tremendously if you would share these videos with other uh, people of common interests. That'll certainly help grow the channel. Thanks again.